So there are two main ways I create maps inside of Adobe After Effects. The first is using the premium extension GeoLayers 3, and the second is using After Effects in conjunction with Google Earth Studio. Now both of these workflows have some limitations. The main feature that's lacking is the fact that you can't use depth of field inside of the 3D cameras in After Effects without doing some kind of workaround. So in today's video, I'm gonna show you three ways that you can fake depth of field inside of Adobe After Effects. Big shout out to my tier three patrons, Tyson the Keymaster, Samara Mahdi, Joseph Culligan, Mike and Sandra over at YouTube, at Flumi Plus One, and Josh. Thanks again, folks, for making this video possible. This animation was actually created in Google Earth Studio. It's a flyover of the Alps. I added some track points, and here are some text elements. And this is kind of a low angle shot, and it's a perfect example of where you can use uh, like a shallow depth of field look to help make your image pop because we clearly have a foreground, a middle ground, and a background here. And I tried to place the text elements in those different like focal planes so that when we add our depth of field, you'll really start to notice it taking effect. So if you're familiar with the workflow, you can see here that when you um, export something from Google Earth Studio and you have track points that you've added, you can export a script file, which you can then use inside of Adobe After Effects to automatically launch and automatically set up your entire project. So that's what I've done here. And if you notice, it looks like this is a proper 3D project because we have a camera down here that's actually flying around it has keyframes, and there's these 3D text layers. But the way that this is set up is, if you look here, the image sequence of our mountains is not 3D. It's just a 2D plane. So if I were to go to the camera here, and I were to enable the depth of field and make it you know, really shallow and start to crank it up, I don't even know where the focus point is, you're going to notice that only the text elements are being affected by that. The mountains are not being affected by that at all because once again, it's a 2D layer. This is why I need to have these techniques of faking the depth of field. And the same thing goes with a lot of the cases inside of uh, GeoLayers 3. Okay, so the first method, it's the fastest and easiest way to get this done. However, it has no customization options and it doesn't give you a very realistic look. So what I'm gonna do here is I'm gonna right click in the comp and I'm gonna go to new adjustment layer and I'm gonna rename this adjustment layer blur. Now, the way that adjustment layers work is with the render order, any, anything underneath that adjustment layer or below it will be affected by whatever effects you put on there, and anything above it will not be affected. So if you want something in your sequence to not be affected by the depth of field blur, simply place it above the adjustment layer. Now I'm gonna go to my effects and presets panel, and I will open up blur and sharpen, and I'm gonna go grab the Gaussian blur and place that on my adjustment layer. And now as I start to crank this up, you'll notice that it is affecting the entire frame here. Now I'm going to go grab my pen tool and simply draw a mask. I can actually grab the rectangle tool and draw on a mask here and I'm gonna make sure that um, I have it come pretty far this way because I'm gonna be blurring out the edges of this mask. So now right away you'll see that it's blurring only the middle. And the way you want to place this mask is you want to create your little plane of focus. This is where you want things to be in focus. Outside of the mask will be out of focus. So I'm going to switch my mask of the blur to subtract. And now I have what looks like the beginning of this fake depth of field. However, if you zoom in on the edges here, you'll notice that they're quite sharp. So I need to grab the layer and hit the F key for feather, mask feather. And then I can just feather this out until it looks good so maybe something like 300 pixels. And just like that, we have a quick down and dirty depth of field. Now to make it a little more dynamic, I could go in and manually draw the mask. This is usually what I do. I don't just do a rectangle, but this is just a good um, example. And naturally, I don't want to cover that logo up as well. So I could just you know come over here and maybe move this down here like that. This method is pretty cool and it's you can do it really fast, but you'll notice the Gaussian blur doesn't have a lot of options for customization. You have blurriness, blur dimensions, and then repeat edge pixels, which you have to turn that on by the way, otherwise you're gonna have sharp edges. So that leads me to the second method. So let's start again from scratch here. I'm gonna go right click, new adjustment layer, and this time I'll rename it blur. This time I'm gonna go grab the camera lens blur we're doing a fake camera lens blur, so why wouldn't we use the camera lens blur effect? Am I right? So I'll crank the, the blur radius here. So you'll see right away I have all of these different parameters for this particular blur. You'll also notice that it's taking much longer to load. So render, um, render time, render speed, 
is very much um, a parameter here that you want to pay attention to. So oftentimes if you're working with a bunch of stuff and you need speed, like you're cranking, you want to crank something out real fast, you might want to use um, a Gaussian blur. And then when you're delivering the final for, you know, the final high end, high resolution file, maybe you slap the camera lens blur to give it more uh, quality. And this blur is just a lot more dynamic and it's more of a, obviously by the name, it's a camera lens blur and you can specify iris properties here so you can change all the different shapes here you have diffraction options so you you can change the aspect ratio to make it look more if you want to go for like an anamorphic look and i could go through and simply do another mask on my adjustment layer but if you look down here there's a section called blur map and it has a layer option. So now if I go and I go create a new solid, I'm gonna create a new solid. It doesn't matter what color it is because I'm gonna be using the alpha information here to use to basically have that edge of the blur. I'll name this blur map and I'm gonna do the same thing here. I'm gonna grab the rectangle tool and I'll quickly draw this rectangle and I'll go to subtract. And now under blur map, I'm going to select the blur map layer and it's important that I go to effects and masks so that it will accept the mask. And then for channel, I'm gonna select alpha. And now I need to actually turn this layer off. And now you can see that blur. However, I did not feather this out. So let's go back and feather this out by 300 pixels. And you can see how much longer this is taking to load. You probably wanna blur this out even more, maybe something like 500. And already this blur is looking a lot more dynamic. However, I think with this particular effect, you really have to feather this out. And you see all the different channel options here. I can use different color values as well as luminance values. So you could actually use this effect to give you like blooming glows or to, you know, blow out your highlights or to give a bunch of different interesting looks if you want to go crazy with it. You can see there's a highlight section down here. But if you look at the blur focal distance, you can also animate your focal plane. So as you can see right now, if I zoom in, this track point in the middle is in focus. So if I grab blur focal distance and I start to shift this, you'll notice that now my focal plane shifts back to here. So now you can animate your focal plane. Crazy. Okay, so if you aren't happy with these two techniques, there is a third technique using a premium tool called Bokeh. So if you're into photography at all, I'm sure you know about Bokeh. It's a very specific effect that you get when you um, are changing your focus with specific type of lenses. So to apply this, I'm gonna add a new adjustment layer, and now I'm gonna go to this, I already have it installed. I'm gonna drop this on my adjustment layer. Now here we have another depth mat as well. So I'm gonna go back to, I'm gonna grab this blur map that I created before. I'm gonna paste it here, rename this blur. And there's a ton of different parameters for this. If I go down to depth mat, you can see now I can grab this same kind of deal as the blur map for the effect before. Effects and masks, and for channel, I'll switch this over to alpha once again. And now look at all of these different parameters we have. Once again, you can animate the focal distance Look at the bokeh that we have over here. This is just from the default settings here. I haven't even changed any of the parameters yet and already look at this. Look at this beautiful stuff over here. And you know how it always goes. If you want high quality, you have to pay for it with render time. So if you compare the different render times now of these sequences, if you see the first technique with the Gaussian blur, you have 419 milliseconds for every frame. For the camera lens blur effect, we have a little over three seconds. And for bokeh, you have roughly seven seconds. So this is a serious thing to consider, especially for me when I'm rendering out, like uh, some clients, I, it's, it's a very tight turnaround. So bokeh isn't always the best option. Sometimes, you know, you go down with the down and dirty Gaussian blur because it's fast, it renders fast. So if you have the luxury of time, definitely check out bokeh. If you don't, maybe try out camera lens blur. If even that's taking too long, check out the down and dirty Gaussian blur technique. Okay, so there you have it. There are three ways you can fake depth of field inside of Adobe After Effects. I hope you enjoyed the video. If you did, be sure to hit that thumbs up button. If you wanna see more videos like this, check out my Monday Maps playlist, link in the video description. And if you really like the content, head over to my Patreon page, link in the description as well. And be sure to check back every Monday for other videos. And if you wanna to subscribe to the channel and hit that notification bell, that would be cool. See you in the next one.